Welcome to Revolutionary Cultures. This episode is dedicated to Cuban internationalism and in particular its medical internationalism. And it's an absolute honour to be joined by two doctors, Dr. Uh, Michelle Santana, who has previously served with distinction across Africa and is now currently the Deputy Director of the uh, Central Medical Collaboration Unit in Havana. And secondly, we're joined by Dr. Ruben Martinez Artiles, and he, he has just returned from Italy as part of the Henry Reeve Brigade that went there uh, to battle against COVID-19, and which, as you'll probably already know, uh, very much uh, held the line in a situation where it looked like the Italian health system was going to be overwhelmed and wasn't receiving help from anywhere else. So although the Henry Reeve Brigade has uh, received uh, more attention uh, recently, it is itself just one further example in a very long line of uh, Cuban humanitarian missions and solidarity missions across the world that stretches all the way back to 1959 and to the revolution itself. The uh, great Cuban figure Jose Marti once wrote, Patria es humanidad. Patria es humanidad. Uh, so simply, uh, homeland is humanity, or humanity is my homeland. And that has typified the Cuban revolution in all its facets. And it is particularly true of its medical internationalism um, and the work that it has done. So it's an absolute pleasure uh, to speak to both Dr. Santana and uh, Dr. Artiles. And we'll also be joined by His Excellency Hugo Ramos, who is Cuba's ambassador to Ireland. And thanks to uh, Hugo and also to Soraya Amy for their assistance in setting up uh, this meeting in the first place. But just in terms of context, um, what we will discuss, the Henry Reeve Brigades, uh, which are at the moment the focus of a campaign, an international campaign, uh, to have the Cuban Medical Brigades uh, nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2021. Uh, a recognition, I suppose, which is long overdue, and as we'll discuss, um, perhaps might have been warranted uh, decades before this, this current attention. But the Henry Reeve Brigades in particular were formed um, as part of an idea that Fidel had in 2005 in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, which devastated parts of uh, the southern states of the USA. Um, and particularly the poor and the disadvantaged were not getting any uh, assistance or help from their own government. And in an act of solidarity, the Henry Reeve Brigade was formed in honour of uh, a man called Henry Reeve, who was a US citizen who fought in Cuba's first war of independence, uh, 1868 to 1878. That offer of solidarity was rebuffed, of course, by the, the Bush administration, but the Henry uh, Reeve Brigade uh, stayed in place as an organisation and indeed in the same year 2005 was sent uh, to Pakistan uh, following the earthquake there. Uh, two, almost two and a half thousand medics were sent over there and treated 70% of the victims 
uh, of that uh, natural disaster. They also went to Guatemala the same year and did the same. They were there in Haiti in uh, 2010 uh, following the disaster there and again they were the largest contingent of medics uh, present. So this, this recent response uh, to COVID is itself just one shining example uh, of Cuba's commitment to humanity to, and uh, th their commitment to solidarity amongst peoples uh, so that the, the Henry Reeve brigades are themselves then part of a tradition which had already uh, been there in uh, Latin America itself and the Caribbean uh, the, you know, from the 1960s onwards they had been treating uh, people and that spread across Africa and across the world. Uh, and the, these internationalists uh, see their mission as a humanitarian one. Ultimately, that their, their politics is grounded in uh, a, the solidarity of all peoples. So to begin the discussion, I asked Dr. Santana just to tell us a bit about that commitment to uh, internationalism and the history of the various medical brigades that Cuba has had. It started in May uh, 1960 uh, when Chile faced a strong uh, earthquake and a medical team of 25, around 25 uh, health professionals went to assist the victim to that country. Uh, three years later, um, Cuba sent the first brigade uh, integrated for, uh, by 50, mem uh, 50 members to our Algeria. Uh, but in this moment, through uh, an agreement between two governments, that is why we said that the collaboration, the international collaboration start in, in this moment by agreement between those both countries. And well, uh, in those 60 years, uh, Cuba uh, sent more than 400,000 health professionals overseas in more than 164 countries. Uh, not only as a medical team, uh, we can send a health professional to as advisor, as consultant, and uh, to international international organisms as, uh, for example, WHO, Pan American Health Organization. Uh, Cuba has a, 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 the cooperation of Cuba is a, a solidarity co a cooperation. And uh, we send the people uh, um, through a official um, um, solicitude from the governments. Um, it's also important our uh, solidarity, our human uh, values and uh, all the Cubans, all the Cubans from the system, uh, health system, um, like to go overseas to help people to bring uh, the experience and uh, attend even the race, the religion, the cultures. And that is why we have a long history of a uh, medical cooperation. And yes, and it's it's tremendous uh, and it's world renowned and, and celebrated by so many people. Um, as it happens, when I was traveling to Havana uh, on the way to the airport, I, I just happened to be speaking to a man from Pakistan uh, who asked me where I was traveling to. And as soon as I told him it was Cuba, um, he talked about the earthquake and about uh, all the work that Cuba did. And he said the, the Cubans are the first ones in and the last people to, to leave. You know, they're, they're celebrated across the world, I think. So the, the current global pandemic, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, 
um, had seen the Henry Reeve Brigade uh, again doing a great uh, life-saving work. Could you maybe talk a bit about the emergence of the he Henry Reeve Brigade and some of the things that you were already doing around the world um, as uh, medics? Yeah, we can divide the 50th year of international cooperation in two uh, periods. Um, as, 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 as I explained, we start the cooperation with an emergency uh, medical team in 1960. Then, from uh, the 1960 to 2005, we sent a 30 emergency, emergency medical team to 19 countries with 2,077 uh, health professionals to help people around the world. In 2005, our uh, chief commander, Fidel Castro, after the disaster of Katrina in the United States of America, uh, create or found the Henry Reef Medical Contingent. And uh, after that, we sent a 28 Henry Reef Medical Team to 21 countries with more than 7,000 health professional people overseas. Uh, I'm, I'm talking 2005, 2019, because in, in at the present moment we have another uh, history for the emergency aid uh, uh, from Cuba to uh, 38 countries, because with the pandemic, with the COVID, we have now 45 brigades or medical team in 38 countries. For example, in uh, Caribbean, we have, uh, it, we, we are in 15 countries. In Europe, we have three brigades now. We only have Azerbaijan with uh, around uh, 200 uh, medical workers. Uh, in Africa, we have 10 brigades or medical team. Even in the Middle East, we have three uh, medical team in Kuwait, Emirates, uh, Emirates, uh, United States, and also in Qatar. Uh, our uh, contribution for the um, health of people in the world is very big. In, in, at the present moment, because we now is uh, we have ha we have around more than three thousand medical um, professional health professional. Not only doctors, we have a bachelor's in nurse, we have a technicians in uh, laboratories, uh, we have a rehabilitation, and we 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 have many uh, health professionals. Not only doctors. And it's, and it's part of the the revolutionary ethos, I suppose, that uh, the that Cuba exports uh, people who are trained and educated uh, to to go and help people and to save lives, rather than exporting nuclear weapons or um, things that are designed to kill people. So it's it's, it's a use of science uh, and education and learning that, that's very much revolutionary and counters the, 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 the prevailing imperialist uh, way of the world and the way that the, the US seems to want to have influenced the world, which is just by threatening people, attacking people and, and so on? Um, well, uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge to, to keep this uh, kind of cooperation over the seas. Um, 
despite of the cruel blockade of the United States of America. Because in most of the case, Cuba assumed the cost of that cooperation. And uh, for that, for example, in Haiti, Cuba has more than 300 uh, health uh, professionals working and Cuba assumed the cost of that cooperation. Even uh, we send the, the medicines, the vaccines, the supplies, the, even the minimum salary or, or a stipend for the Cuban uh, workers uh, there in Haiti. And the uh, United States of America um, is very cruel with us because uh, he has a campaign um, against with the Cuban doctors and um, try to, to um, spread it and hide the, the Cuban International Medical Cooperation. Um, it's uh, very difficult to us, uh, but the, the Cuban doctor doesn't, doesn't think about that and continue working as usually in those country. And that is why uh, people want uh, always to see a Cuban doctors at the, as a, in their, the clinics and the hospital and the health centers. Because I, I, I suppose um, if it weren't for this long history of Cuban uh, healthcare overseas, many people would never get to see a doctor. You know, and that, that includes people in La Patria Grande, uh, Africa, across the whole world, you know, the, it's Cubans are going in and doing things that uh, particularly right when it comes to sort of right wing uh, US sponsored governments that they, they don't really bother much about their own populations. And it's actually Cubans who went to areas in Brazil or uh, elsewhere in order to, to kind of help and treat people. Um. I have a personal uh, experience of that. For example, uh, when uh, when I was in Zimbabwe, well, I was very young. Uh, um, we were three doctors, two Cubans and one a native from a doctor from Zimbabwe. And in outpatient department, we always finish at six or 7 p.m. very late and uh, when we see outside we, 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 we can see many people waiting for us and we say to the nurse when well, you can put the uh, uh, patient to another doctor and she said no 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 they would like to see you because you can talk with him you can touch him and you can cure when you see them. And this is very important for, for a Cuban doctors when, when the people uh, recognize the, the values of the Cuban medicine and the clinic and epidemiologic uh, concept of the medicine. Not, it's not a, you cannot pay for that, you, you only go to see a doctor and she talk with you. She cure the the heart. Yes, certainly. That I mean that that has been Cuba's. Uh, that's a, a nice um, microcosm of, of what Cuba has done for the world, uh, despite the blockade and despite uh, the U.S. trying to threaten uh, countries that, that want to uh, cooperate with. Cuba and, and see uh, Cuba's help. Um, given that you mentioned the, the blockade, um, it, would you like to say something about uh, the, the fact that Cuba has offered 
assistance to the US as well, um, but which their government received. But uh, I suppose gov the, the, the US government is one thing and people in the US are another thing in a way. Um, when, I, when I was in uh, Havana, they, I met lots of people from around the world and that included lots of young US citizens who were in Cuba training to be doctors and so on. Um, just as I remember watching videos of Fidel visiting Harlem and people in Harlem uh, give Fidel a wonderful reception. It's, so there's there, there's lots of connections and cooperations going on between people, I suppose. Um, it's just that unfortunately because of the the policies pursued by successive American administrations that that, that in, in addition to um, trying to hurt Cuba, they're actually also trying to hurt their own people as, as well as people around the world. Uh, yeah. In 1999, uh, Fidel created the Latin American School of Medicine. In that place, um, we receive many uh, young people and train in the School of Medicine as a doctor, even U.S. student. And our uh, commanding said that uh, this school uh, is for young people, that is for young people that couldn't access to uh, for a study, medicine study in their countries. And for that reason, when they finish, they can wait to help people in in those countries with the value, with the solidarity, with the humankind uh, of the Cuban doctors. And uh, yes, up to now we have we have around we have been around 50 graduation with more than 70,000 of of doctors uh, from many countries, even US. All of this incredible humanitarian work is being undertaken by Cuban medics in a context in which they are lied about and slandered continuously by uh, the US in particular, its various puppet regimes around the world and by most uh, outlets in Western media. Uh, they will allege, for example, that Cuba is involved in human trafficking, that these doctors are uh, uh, slaves and so on. Now, I would have thought that if anybody knows what a slave is, I guess uh, it's those in Washington DC, given that their society was founded by slave owners, given that they have uh, helped to reopen modern day slave markets in North Africa, thanks to their interventions there. And indeed many uh, young people in the US and other Western societies uh, find that when they want to get an education themselves, they're left with a bill of tens of thousands of dollars or euros or pounds, and they might uh, see that hollowness in these words uh, that come out of Washington DC and elsewhere. So I asked Dr Santana what she felt uh, about trying to do her job uh, whilst all these baseless uh, and spurious allegations were uh, abound. This uh, health worker has a contract between us and they, there is an agreement between the minister or between the, the, um, the government and you can see all the obligation of the parties. And a uh, with this this um, health worker received an stipend, uh, and the country um, has uh, give 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 them um, everything to for communication, accommodation, and um, food. Even you can they can buy the food with those with this stipend and in those cases 
uh, in countries, for example, with uh, as Qatar or Mozambique or Kuwait, uh, where the where which Cuba when when Cuba sorry when Cuba receive um, some benefits economic from those uh, health workers, all those economic benefits are going to the health system. It's very important to that. Um, to cover all the necessity of the Cuban health system. And uh, we don't negotiate uh, the work of the Cuban doctors for nothing. It's for all the Cuban people. It's for the national Cuban system. And that is why one the campaign of the United States, because they say that a Cuban doctor has are slave. That is why we um, we leave the MICE medical program in Brazil because uh, the president Jair Bolsonaro said that Cuban doctors are slaves from Cuba. So geographically, Cuba is a small island, but politically, it's an island so strong that it's able to carry the burden of an entire planet's humanitarian and internationalist concerns. Given that it is subject to this blockade and to the terrible effects of that blockade, I asked Dr. Santana what she felt about how the rest of the world could try to reciprocate Cuba's solidarity and commitment to humanity. What kinds of practical things can the rest of us do to support and to help Cuba, this revolutionary society, which is itself dedicated to trying to help and support others? Well, um, we need many people uh, like you to help us in all, all over the world uh, that promote the resolve of the Cuban medical teams. And uh, Cuba, um, has to show all the, res the resolve in the health system, even in Cuba and, and also in the countries where the Cuban are. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we can uh, um, continue working and promote health but it's a, a very hard work for us. But I think that the, um, with the solidarity group and um, social um, um, of, like as a Facebook, Twitter, and all the um, ticks. Social media, yeah. yeah we can promote our work and show to the world all the results of the Cuban Medical Brigade. But it is, we have to do many, many things for that, to show to the world our work. One of the most remarkable things about the response to the COVID pandemic by the Henry Reeve Brigades is that not for the first time Cubans were willing to place themselves on the front line and put themselves in danger, particularly given that so little was known about uh, th this new virus. So one of the things I asked Dr. Artiles was what kinds of preparation could uh, they undertake before leaving Cuba and heading to Italy? On that we were called here uh, in our hospitals to uh, okay we received uh, I remember on 15 March March 15th 
we got the news here that uh, Italy was uh, asking for help to our government uh, due to the outbreak of uh, the pandemic uh, there. It was a critical situation they, they had. It was the epicenter of the pandemic in the world in that moment. So they were in such a difficult situation that led them to ask for help to us. So uh, after we read that news, uh, I was called in my hospital and I have to uh, say that it was a, pr a process that it was strictly volunteer. When they told us to go there, they just asked if we were in the conditions and if we wanted to go there because they knew the risk, the risk we were facing by doing this. So uh, after we gave our approval, which it's uh, a moral thing to us to help others, is the way that uh, we were formed here, the humanistic uh, uh, way uh, we were formed. So we, of course, said yes immediately. We, we thought it was a, a thing of principles, a thing of uh, a help uh, to help it others uh, in this kind of situation. So uh, we said yes, of course. And after that, we had preparation here in Havana before going there. We have to remember that coronavirus is a new disease. So all of the people, all of the professional in the world didn't have too much of coronavirus by that moment. We have to remember that it was on March and the pandemic, the first cases began in December, uh, December 2019. So people uh, around the world, doctors around the world, scientists around the world didn't have the last word with coronavirus, didn't have the truth uh, of coronavirus. So uh, there was this situation of hesitating around the world about what to do, how to do it. So, but we had all this information here in Cuba, uh, even when we had no cases for, by that moment, we were gathering all that information. So we were prepared here by specialists of the, or an important center in Cuba, which is famous around the world, the e IPK Institute, the Institute Pedro Couri, which is a leader in the region uh, treating and and researching about infectious diseases. So we have this preparation for very great specialists here for uh, a whole week. So the science then was still trying to catch up with the virus. There must have still then been great uncertainty uh, before departing Cuba and arriving in Italy. It was not the truth, the final truth about, uh, about coronavirus. We're, we were having a preparation, but that was not the, the, the real, the reality. We could face something different when we got there. Cuba, by that moment, were even working in the protocols we were going to uh, apply here, but we had no experience treating cases as now, of course. So we were gathering information, I mean scientists, uh, and doctors, we, we were uh, gathering some information that were coming out all over the world. If from the experience in China, uh, then from the experience in Italy. So we got there with this preparation we had here, which was very useful, but uh, certainly uh, limitations about what we were going to uh, face in the reality. No. Cubans are very humble people, as well as being very courageous people. But I asked Dr. Artiles uh, to what extent he and his colleagues felt apprehensive or fearful, and, and what was it that, that drove them uh, to go uh, across the world and to try and help other human beings? First of all, for this, uh, the first thing we, we think is to help, but certainly it comes, uh, there comes the thoughts of uh, being worried, you know, of being concerned about the situation where we were going to face. And uh, of course, it 
came to my mind and to my uh, partner's mind, my colleague's mind. But first of all, it, there was this uh, will to help, this will to, to do for the others, because we do it here in Cuba too. So why not to do it with other uh, people? Why not to do it with other countries when they, when, when they need it? I think it's a basic uh, human uh, principle to do these kind of things. We live in a world today that we are not used to these uh, actions, but we think mm -hmm. it's important in, diff in such difficult moments like this to stick together and to join each other and to fight against these, these kind of, of things. It's uh, a principle for the big, and it's a principle for uh, having good results, for healing people, for saving some person from this, this kind of, of disasters. So I think, uh, first of all, it's a kind of, it's, it's a thing of humanity. Uh, it's, it's a thing of being committed to our profession, which is in the first place to heal, which is in the first place to help. And plus, we are formed in, in this kind of, of, of uh, principles. We, we do it uh, willingly, not, not, because, not because someone told us to do it. I even told you at first, I was commenting that the, the mission was strictly volunteer and every meeting we had before going there, every uh, uh, that uh, had the meeting with us, the, the first question we had was that, are you willingly doing this? Are you doing this because you want? If there, there is the single one that doesn't want to do it, we are okay with that. You can not, you can let other people that can go. And that's something I always say because uh, uh, some people mislead the, the uh, and, and they uh, say things about the Cuban gays, about the Cuban doctors that are not real. And we have to declare that, that this, this is, uh, these kind of missions are strictly volunteer. So first of all, uh, we were afraid, of course. And I have to tell that, of course, we, that we are that the younger, the younger ones, you know, we have this kind of adrenaline at first that we're going to do this, we're going to help, we're going to, to beat this. But uh, certainly there's the moment when all these all this other thoughts come to your mind that the concern, uh, the, that you're facing something that, something that people don't know, that professionals don't know well, so you're facing something that is risky. But we, that's, that's life about, we have to face risk and even more if it's, in, if, if it's to help people. Given the heroic effort, that Dr. Artiles and others uh, have made. Uh, I wanted to know what he felt about the US blockade and indeed all the lies uh, that were told about his efforts and the efforts of his, of his comrades. Something that has beat us but hasn't defeated us and, is, and it won't defeat us. Uh, Cuba does do it uh, as a kind of propaganda. We don't do it, uh, we just do it because a matter of principles. It's our principle, as Fidel told us once, to uh, pay our debt with, um, with humanity. Uh, it's a, it's uh, uh, the, the principle of helping others when they need it. And we prove that with this mission, not only with the third world like us, but with everyone who asked for Cuban help, we, were, we are going to be there because this is about helping. This is about our principles. This is not about uh, making a propaganda. We don't uh, even ask for anything uh, before going to Italy. We, do, we didn't put any condition before going there. We just did it strictly volunteer. We just asked for, they uh, said the arrangements uh, for being there or staying there. And that's all we, we we got and that's that's all we asked for. We didn't ask for anything else. Uh, we didn't ask even 
for recognition is not something we, we uh, search doing these kind of things. We only search for helping people. We, don't, we, only, we only search for helping others. It's the, well, what we do. But I know there's this, this, this opposite uh, propaganda uh, from the United States, but we have reasons we have too many reasons to defeat that to defeat that with our actions, because actions speak themselves. We don't have to uh, 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 write a paper uh, or do anything. Uh, the actions work uh, and talk by themselves. So uh, they have been concerned. They have they have been doing this kind of propaganda. They say they use us as slaves and. We have to declare that we are not a slave of anyone. We go to these countries volunteer. I always say that. And in the places that is his is not for humanity help, in the places that we are we have cooperation, we sign a contract. Nobody uses us. We do it all these kind of things, strictly volunteers with with the uh, will of helping others. Uh, that's what we, we do. And of course, the blockade had, has worsened this last month, these last years. And after the pandemic, uh, when they even should have uh, opened a bit for making us have access to many donations, medications necessary for the struggle with the pandemic here in Cuba, they even closed more, more doors. Uh, but uh, Cuba always uh, find the way we have even friends that we have earned uh, along the, the years for this action. So there, there's always the, the hand of a friend that helps us and that uh, make, uh, makes us access, access, uh, have access to this uh, stuff, kind of stuff. Um, this is something that we cannot uh, change, but I mean, the, the way they make this propaganda, it even has an effect on some uh, in some uh, countries, but that's something uh, we don't, don't, it's not going to stop us in, the, in our will to, in our principles to help others. It's not going to stop us ever. So. Uh, this is what we have to say. We can have blockade, we can have uh, uh, people in the United States, even in other countries, trying to uh, put the medical cooperation in, in another level, but actions, as I told you before, uh, uh, tell, uh, speak themselves. Yes, That's certainly. Uh, and. Um you know, the, the actions of people like yourself uh, and of the Cuban revolution uh, more widely has been of such great benefit to the world and humanity, whereas the actions and indeed the lack of actions of the US uh, also speaks volumes and speaks much more loudly than all of their propaganda. I think the, the more people around the world who realise uh, this, the better the, the world will be. That. The United States, um, as a society, denies education and training to so many of its own citizens because of poverty and inequality and so on. And indeed, many uh, African Americans in particular get an education in Cuba that they wouldn't get in the US. And of course, the, the US, even as it wants to accuse Cuba of slavery, is a society which was itself built upon slavery and its so-called so revolution was a revolution by slave owners, whereas the Cuban revolution was a, re a revolution in, in uh, a meaningful sense. It overturned an imperial colonial racist uh, regime. So I think the, the, the decency of, of Cuba uh, and your humanitarianism shines across the whole world, uh, whereas the, the empire is so blind, blinded by its own ideology or uh, its own attempt to uh, uh, reassert the Monroe Doctrine and so on across the continent and indeed across the world. They're so blinded by their own ideology that they refuse to keep help in uh, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, for example. So they, they, 
They even deny their own citizens uh, help from uh, Cuban doctors and so on. So, so, so there is uh, a thing that, that they even talk uh, and they say in their propaganda, they, they talk about human rights, but denying this access to the health is a, a kind is a thing of human rights. So they are denying the human right to their people, to their citizens, because we, as you know, as you uh, should know, and, and as you talk to Dr. Michel, uh, our brigade, the uh, uh, Henry Reeve Brigade, was formed in this year, 2005, after Katrina, with the only uh, uh, with the only principle of helping us, as I told you before. We just wanted to help people that were passing for such a terrible situation in the south of the United States, and they even denied that. So, uh, what do you think of a government that denied this uh, kind, this access to the health uh, to to their citizens? How how do they have moral to talk about people to about a people about the revolution that helped others not only give free assistance to their citizens to their people but uh, not only that but also to the rest of the world when they need it Cuba has now uh, uh, until today uh, uh, cooperate co uh, collaborators internationally. It's, in more than 35 countries, more than, more than 35 brigades uh, has uh, gone to other countries to help in the fight against coronavirus. And this uh, makes a, contra a contrast with their reality. So I think there's no more to do that, but uh, this is a kind, of course, this is a, a thing, a matter of uh, the monopolies of information they only say what they want to say, and they just uh, say the information they, they want to say. So that's what get uh, what other people get, what other people ha have access to. So that's what uh, can sometimes have a, a bad vision about our cooperation. But as I told you before, there are there are some things that cannot be viewed, that cannot be silenced. There are actions that uh, there is no way to shut it down, shut it down. So, like this kind of collaboration with Europe, we did have, we did have brigades in Italy, Piemonte and Crema, and we have also a brigade in Andorra. Uh, we have to say that th these are countries. Uh, I mean, Italy is one of the, mo the most richest, the richest countries all over the world, and. Uh, it, it, this, this is, there's no way you, you can silence this kind of, of information. And this change uh, the way of, of people see Cuba after this kind of actions. Yes, definitely. Um, the, 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 the fact that uh, it was Cuba who went to help Italy, uh, it wasn't the US, it wasn't the EU, uh, and, and you did it because it was the right thing to do, which, which is absolutely incredible. Given that you are yourselves denied medicines and so on by the, the blockade, and it, it's very obvious in the work that you've done in places like Andorra or Italy, but, but of course also elsewhere in the world that, that you're on the right side of history and the empire and those who want to support what the US is doing or be silent about it are on the wrong side of history. It's obvious on the streets of Brazil or Bolivia, you know, that where, uh, where imperialism and puppets uh, of US imperialism are in control, they have no interest at all in people's health or people's well-being. Um, but if Cubans are there and when Cubans do the work, no one else from these regimes is going to do that work uh, in, in the place of Cubans. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I there's a, a matter here of uh, political uh, willing. You know, if you uh, as a government, you have a humanist vision of our government, you of course do 
actions, the facts are to uh, make people being well, about the well-being of people, about the well-being of citizens. And that means to protect our citizens, to, to have them uh, assistance, medical assistance. And this is a reality that is, is not uh, in some other countries. And as you told before, some of these countries, their governments are their puppets. They do what, what they want. Uh, they just command the actions in these countries. And this is, uh, I mean, the, the interest. But uh, we don't believe that an ideology would uh, stop us, as I told you before. We don't even care the kind of government you have in your country. If you just need help and you ask for help, we will give that help. That's all we, we do. Pa Patria is humanidad, as Jose Martí once said. So yes, um, no, that, that's an absolutely incredible. Um, you know, I, I suppose one thing everyone else in the world needs to do then is to work out how to help Cuba more to end this illegal criminal blockade. Uh, uh, if we have any, even though I know uh, Cubans are humble people, uh, but if you had any advice for what, what the rest of the world can do more to isolate the US rather than the US isolate, seeking to isolate Cuba, are the things that we can do to help practical things? We even have so many friends all over the world that uh, have done so much work until today to help in that purpose, you know? So uh, all over the world, all, all, uh, in all countries, there are people that are uh, doing things that actually, uh, that are actually doing things uh, to help us. So uh, we have countries that uh, their governments even help us, help us. That, but uh, I, as you told, as you told before, this uh, criminal law, uh, which violates everything, uh, I mean human rights, I mean uh, the Declaration of the United Nations. Uh, and it's uh, strongly, uh, how can I say, stick to their, their, their policy, their way they, they treat us. So they, they, uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to, for, for people to, to, to do this kind of actions. I, I, I'm not saying that hasn't been enough. They are being uh, enough, but it's been difficult. But uh, we don't have pretensions we, with uh, the other countries. We, we uh, don't ask for, for, for someone to do something specific to, to help us. We have more uh, vision from inside. We have this vision to uh, save the others, to save ourselves. When in, in, even in real life, this is not the kind of uh, politics. When you do good to the rest of the persons, you should receive uh, good things from, from them. And that's what we're going, that's what we're doing. That, and that's what we have done. And that's what we are receiving. We have so many friends all over the world that are yeah, actually helping us. We have government, governments like China, like Russia that help us. And we have some other people all over the world that help us. We, we even received, we have received in this, during this pandemic donations from almost all over the world. Uh, so uh, I think that the actions that have been doing the movement of solidarity with Cuba, uh, it's, it's been such great work so far. It's uh, such a great, uh, uh, such an incredible effort to try to uh, defeat this law, but I also think it's not uh, it's not up to any of us. Uh, it's not a decision we make. We should uh, really find a way to um, avoid this kind of laws and receive help uh, from from others. And we are open to any help, but we don't really ask for anything. We don't even ask for actions. We don't do anything. Uh, expecting anything in in change, you know, we don't do this action for you to help me to to end blockade or for you to push anyone to end blockade. That's that's not the way we we do things. 
we only do the well and if you uh, want if you if it's your will you will make well to us too so uh, but not because we it's a condition we we put for doing this kind of, of things yes that that's uh, that's one of the most impressive uh, and commendable things about uh, the, the Cuban uh, medics and doctors that you, you do this unconditionally as, as part of your commitment, your revolutionary commitment to humanity, whereas where uh, the US or other rich countries gets involved, it's usually by way of so-called charity, but that, that it's usually uh, transactional, as it were, uh, that they're looking for profits or they're looking for uh, economic advantage and so on. Um, but I, I think that, that this pandemic has shown more people the disparity, the, the difference between uh, all the propaganda that the US has about Cuba, also about itself and its role as the world's uh, policeman, uh, as the kind of good guy, the, the, the difference between that and the reality of the way that it punishes the Cuban people as a whole, and indeed the way it has then threatened other governments around the world and tried to stop them from receiving Cuban assistance and so on. So the, the, the empire, I suppose, is losing friends and allies. Um, and Cuba, as ever, Cuba is uh, growing its, its list of uh, friends. The truth always uh, gets out. Uh, that's something we we should know for for real, and uh, they have been saying for years uh, such these things that some people uh, ha have believed them because they don't have uh, any other way to to contrast information. So you say this, and I have to believe this. And uh, there is a theory that. When you uh, repeat a lie a thousand times, then it becomes a true. So this is how they have worked with with Cuba during 60 years of uh, revolution. So they have trying to hide uh, all uh, of the good things we have in Cuba, all the well-being, uh, the revolution, uh, try to 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 make to their citizens and to the rest of the world, but. Uh, for the first time, I mean, not not not, not uh, maybe for the first time, but now in this situation, th there they, there have not been way to to stop uh, this uh, huge truth. They couldn't uh, they couldn't stop the fact that we were there when when they didn't do anything, uh, and we didn't do it as a as a, as a matter of propaganda. We did it because this is what we have been doing during 60 years. But they, the difference is that now they couldn't stop that. They couldn't stop the information because it has it had more relevance uh, because of the situation the, the world was passing through. So uh, of course, so many people are now um, let's say waking up from this uh, long period of time receiving all this information and for the first time they are just uh, proving, uh, seeing themselves with facts that uh, this is not what they have been telling for 60 years. Uh, for the first time, uh, they much, uh, very, uh, a lot of people are seeing what uh, Cuban revolution is giving to the world what our country is giving to the world and what our country is giving to ourselves, our citizens and all over the world. So this is, uh, there, there, there's no way they could stop this. There's no way they could hide this. So this has made him more irritable, let's say. And that's maybe uh, the, the, the fact that made them uh, to uh, worsen the 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 chains with the, the with the blockade thing but this is something is not going to stop us because so many people are waking up from this from this uh, 
uh, nightmare they, they have been having. They are uh, waking up and seeing the reality of Cuba for the first time. Yes, and his colleagues' arrival in Italy, a supposed first world country, uh, certainly galvanize a great deal of interest, particularly in um, Western society and uh, amongst Western commentators uh, regarding the Cuban internationalism. And of course, it, it, it uh, resulted in another barrage of propaganda from the US. Uh, but one of the consequences of this uh, awakening of uh, a degree of consciousness in uh, Western societies is an international campaign uh, designed to nominate the Henry Brigades for the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, and uh, given all of that, I was interested in particular in what doc Dr. Artiles has, uh, himself felt about all of this. Uh, we, we didn't expect uh, this in the first place. Uh, in fact, we didn't do anything of this, expecting anything back. But as you say, we, we see that the same way. We see uh, this uh, as the word saying thank you, as you just said. Uh, I think it's the recognition uh, from uh, some other, some, from, from people all over the world to the work of the, of, uh, the brigades, uh, to the, for the work of uh, the Cuban revolution, revolution on these uh, places. So uh, when we uh, realized that more and more organizations were asking for this, uh, it just uh, make made us feel made us feel so proud, so happy. Uh, even when we think that we didn't do anything special to receive such a huge recognition. The only fact that so many people all over the world uh, have the same thought, have the same way of thinking about uh, our brigades, about Cuban internationalism, about uh, Cuban uh, doctors, well, that's more than enough for us. Believe me, we don't even need the Nobel Prize right now. We have the recognition of uh, all over the world. We have the recognition of so many people all over the world. So many people grateful for what we have done. So there is no major recognition for us than that. I can really assure you that as the way that we think, as uh, something we even comment between us, uh, we didn't even think we, we deserved such a, a, a thing, but only the recognition of the people asking for that for us, that what that is our Nobel Prize, believe me. That's, the, that's our Nobel Prize for us. We could, we could not even be nominated to that. We, we don't even care about being nominated, nominated to the Nobel Prize. We only care about so many people all over the world are so great grateful for what we have done and that's our Nobel Prize. That's something uh, I can assure you. Uh, it's uh, the way we feel, not, not only for me, I'm not talking only for me, I'm talking for uh, there's thousands of internationalists still out there in, in so many countries and that have even uh, came back to our country after doing this labor uh, outside. This is a point also picked up by Hugo Ramos, uh, Cuba's ambassador in Ireland. He and Dr. Artiles bo both felt that there was a kind of paradigm shift, as they put it, underway with the current campaign to nominate uh, the Henry Reid Brigades for the Nobel Peace Prize. Now, regardless of the merits of that particular prize uh, and the fact that I suppose it, it, the whole nomination process runs through the circuitry of NATO, it's something that has been given to Henry Kissinger, uh, for example. Uh, but regardless of all of that, I think they felt that the, the debate itself around that would help amplify uh, Cuba's role in the world, counter the propaganda, and also then enlist more necessary uh, solidarity internationally that would support Cuba, and most importantly of all things, end finally the blockade. Yeah, that's right. In my personal opinion, Aaron, um, 
all these organizations around the world and personalities that are supporting this idea, this project, they are answering in that way to the propaganda campaign against the international cooperation on the health sector. And at the same time, they are recognizing what the doctors has has done and what they're doing till now, but also on their line, their line of putting in, in the right place, place the urgency that nowadays we have of solidarity and cooperation. This is the way I read. It doesn't matter if, even if they are nominated or nominated, but it's important. It's important as a, as a, as an answer against a policy, a wrong policy that pretended to to isolate Cuba. But what is happening, in fact, what is really happening is that they are the ones who are isolating themselves. I agree with you that this is going to make a change. Uh, this is going to make a change about how people think about Cuba, about what people are going to uh, be uh, with Cuba. So but, um, I told you that those were not our pretensions. Uh, we, of course, receive everything that comes in, in a good way. Uh, in the name of the well-being of, of us, uh, we're going to receive uh, to receive it, but uh, it's not really uh, our pretension. We are so happy uh, so far that so many people are answering this way, that are recognizing that that is a change uh, itself. So uh, we don't even need that much. Uh, the recognition the the, the way people are recognizing uh, our work is uh, more than, than enough. Firmeza de tu 
brazo libertario Aquí se queda la clara La entrañable transparencia De tu querida presencia Comandante llegue para Seguiremos adelante Como junto a ti seguimos Y con Fidel te decimos Hasta siempre comandante Aquí se queda la clara La entrañable transparencia De tu querida presencia Llegue para. I'm a doctor saying to this revolution. <laughs>